Hey, welcome back to MCOM Solutions. My name's Jake, and I'm going to be redoing a LoRa antenna video because of a, uh, one of my uh, one of the people over at the Telegram group, which uh, I created, is a LoRa Mesh Communications Telegram group, and I'll put a link down below if you're interested in joining that group. There's over 400 members as of April of 2024, and <clears throat> uh, it, when I did that video, I had a couple of technical issues, and when I went back to the screen share part where I was sharing DigiKey's website and one of my favorite antennas, this this uh, TE connectivity. Uh, antenna, whether it's the 868 that I currently am using here in Europe or uh, their, their, uh, their 915 megahertz uh, one that's um, used in the U.S. So I clicked on the wrong one. And so that I'm showing it on the screen. Well, I'm not really paying attention to that when I'm doing the video and I missed it. He caught it and I'm glad he did. Uh, so that allowed me to come out here and correct myself because the connector if you order that one now fortunately in the video that one had the correct antenna linked down below so hopefully nobody's ordered the wrong antenna if you did i'm sorry but i know um digi key will uh, return you can can return this but so you are looking when you're looking in an antenna for any of these whether it's rack uh, lily go or helltech you're looking for the standard male SMA. I'll be showing that here shortly on you know on the screen. But um, if you if it says RP, that's reverse polarity, and that's typically for like Wi-Fi systems and stuff, which is pretty prevalent in these a lot of these frequency ranges. So it could be really easy to make that mistake. So uh, just wanted to point that out. We'll be showing you here. Uh, so and I'm going to do some updates from that last video just because there's been a few products that come out that I'm. I wanted to share with you um and so the biggest thing i'm just going to say right here in the beginning is if you're looking for an antenna no matter if it's a digi key or wherever else if you can't find a data sheet for it i wouldn't recommend buying it now amazon sells a lot of different stuff and a lot of different types of antennas you can get from Amazon. And I know I'm a big Amazon user, but I don't order my antennas from there unless I can find one that I already know I can go to the manufacturer's website and find the data sheet because you're not going to find it on Amazon. And usually the description doesn't give you the information you're looking for. The data sheet just shows you that the manufacturer has been, does testing and advertises what the specifications of that antenna are and their, S, uh, their SWR ratings for the center of that frequency because you know, obviously usually the antenna is tuned or cut for a frequency range and it's tuned typically for the center of that frequency. Um, and we could talk that about Laura, but <laughs> we, we won't, right? And I don't want to get off on that, uh, at least in this video, maybe we'll talk in a future video. But, um, so should be around 915 megahertz for the U.S. and then 868 for Europe, like where I'm at right now. So let's take a look at these antennas. One of the other thing I'm going to know is you should be looking for one, in my humble opinion, with an internal counterpoise because those work best in this type of application in a handheld device. Uh, that's carried on your body or carried in your hand or whatever uh, that doesn't require um, that ground plane to have optimal operation because you're going to find that in the data sheet where it'll tell you that information, which, like I said, you're probably not going to find on sites like Amazon. So once you get over to the RF antennas, you're going to see that there's over 13,000 results. Uh, we're going to want to filter that down. And for the sake of this video, I'm just going to go to the TE Connectivities. Um, manufacturer but you can go down if you look across here you can look at the rf family you can filter that way you can filter by frequency groups the center of the frequency band frequency range uh, antenna types you know like i said a lot of different you can really um tune this in to what you're looking exactly what you're looking for uh, but sometimes you know you're you're kind of just shopping so you want to be a little more prod and maybe just search laura or ISM, ISM band, you know, antennas. So, so if you look at uh, TE connectivity, you have TE connectivity, have several different ones. The links one is the one that I'm specifically, you got, now we're down to 600 um, different um, things. We can say, hey, I want to look for stuff that's in stock. Oh, that gets us down to 360. So we'll, we'll apply that 
we'll go ahead and search. We'll come down here. So there's a lot of different uh, radios or antennas available and uh, that they're going to offer. Notice right here, I'm just going to point this one out. As you see right here, it's going to tell you it's a WIP RPSMA male. So that's reverse polarity. That's what I ended up selecting. It wasn't that antenna, but it was a different one. Uh, we'll get to it here shortly. Um, so right here, this is this is my go-to antenna, whether, you know, the, of course, this one, the 916, which is the US one, is the standard RP SMA male. That's what I did. Stake there. Go down one. <laughs> And you're still an RP. This is the 868, which is the ones that I have here in Europe. Um, and <laughs> go down, keep going down. And oh, here we go. STR, which is, stands for standard SMA male. That is the one you need. Uh, so please, you know, don't don't get the uh, the RP one. So the reverse polarity one. So right here, this is it. Uh, this is the antenna I, I really like. Um, Okay, so if you jump over to the data sheets, this is what I'm talking about. Um, the data sheet for this antenna, it's gonna tell you basically all the information here, more information you probably wanna know, but here's where it's gonna tell you, hey, it's got an internal counterpoise. Uh, and you go down, it's got dimensions, it's got everything, it's got the SWR, they've tested that. It's gonna give you typically, if you keep going, it's gonna show you the, the actual graph of that. And you can see uh, where, they tested it at the 916 megahertz, uh, which is a little off center of the um, the ISM band for that range, but it's 1.4, almost 1.5, right? Which is which is very usable. Um, now, LoRa operates on 906 as its default setting. Uh, the way they have it set up in Mastastic. So that's going to be a little bit left to here. So your SWR probably will be a little higher uh, when you're using your Allure device. Not sure why Mastastic did that. I've read quite a bit on uh, the discourse group and there's a lot of theories, I guess. But um, yeah, if you want to build your own antenna, it's probably the only way you're going to get one cut exactly to that center or what they have the center is a 906. So all right, and then let's just look at one other tenant because I just want to show you this. This one I was looking at because it's a shorter kind of whip, move myself here out of the way, um, that's uh, only like three, three and a half inches or 3.1 inches or 80 millimeters. So shorter than this antenna. And I'm like, oh, that'd be cool for um, a, um, <clears throat> you know, for radio because it's a little shorter, a little more compact. And then I started reading, get down here and you look right here, use with plastic and it's got an asterisk. You look down to asterisk, requires proximity ground plane. If you use it on a metal enclosure, you've got your ground plane, right? So that is something. One of the other cool parts about this is they do have it centered at 916, but it has a range of 865 to 965, uh, which would allow you to use it both in Europe and in the States on your device. But, you know, these are just things you can, you should consider when you're looking at antenna and you're not gonna find this on a lot of websites. All right, so let's jump over to Rockland. All right, so over here at Rockland, this is one I'm interested in getting for the States as uh, they have this uh, little flexible whip. Um, <clears throat> they have it on the T-Echo or, you know, T-Beam or others, right? It's listed. It is um, 3.2, looks like. Yeah. Mm, I don't know. Oh, that's Gain? Oh, Gain? I guess it's Gain. It's 3.2. Uh, it doesn't have a good review, but we'll, we'll get into that in a second. Um, so they're going to tell you pretty much everything about it here, but they don't say anything about whether or not it has an, an internal counterpoise. Um, and then so it says, hey, testing noting for the nanometers or the nano VNAs. They use a pretty high end. I mean, we're talking these things are thousands of dollars, this, um, this network analyzer to determine that its SWR was uh, respectable. 
Um, and they're, they, you know, tell you about some other antennas online. If you look, that have these real wide frequency spectrums. So they're saying this is less than two, uh, which is, you know, uh, I would believe them if they're using that, uh, you know, high end of device, it's going to be a lot more accurate than, uh, your thing. The person that made the comment is, uh, it says it's poor, poor, uh, poor to SWR cause they test it with their VNA. They were getting 2.5 to one, which is, yeah, not, you don't want that. That's where, uh, Rockling replied back and told them, Hey, you know, we, we don't recommend using those on these, these flexible type antennas. You're not going to get accurate readings and that they use their, their fancy equipment. Uh, so the other one I wanted to show that they're, they're finally available. They're not, they're, you know, more expensive. Uh, they're obviously th almost $35, uh, but they do have these in the 915 and the 868. So you can, you know, for here in Europe where I'm at right now, you could use this one. They're like the tactical gooseneck types. You know, you see this kind of more of a like, Hey, I'm, uh, employing this setup on a, you know, on my kit and I want a durable antenna that's going to you know, take a beating and you could be, you know, attached to your, you know, Molly gear or whatever, and you'd be ready to go. I still, I, I'm going to hit up Rockland. I am associated with Rockland, not DigiKey, um, but um, I'm going to hit them up and see if they have a data, data sheet for this. They do show you that they're testing, uh, but I still kind of want to know as this antenna designed uh, to, you know, need a ground plane uh, or does it have an, you know, counterpoise. Uh, so, it, you know, because the performance could could uh, be, it supposedly has a four dB uh, dBi gain, uh, and it's but it's pretty. It's twelve inches, so and it weighs four point one ounces. So not cheap, not one you'd really want unless you're attaching this to your gear. So, but they said I'm gonna hit them up, see what we find. I just want to show you this. I'm gonna put, of course, everything will be linked down below if you guys are interested. Uh, I hope this answered your guys's questions. If you have more questions please just you know hit me up in the comments join our telegram group you can ask me and others over there uh, most of the time when someone throws a uh, question uh, question and answer in the q a tab uh, it get it gets answered uh, before i even see it uh, because time differences especially because a lot of the people there's people all over the world there so if you're from somewhere other than the united states please feel free to join um there's people from uh, you know, Germany, Portugal, UK, like I said, all over the place. So go ahead and join uh, if you're interested and we can talk there. So thanks for watching. Check out uh, or go ahead and check out our social media links down below. Subscribe to the channel. Stay tuned for more great